Okay. So does fiber. Okay. We have to take all of that into account because you can't just say is one variable that explains everything. You have to say, okay, well, there's multiple different things that all accumulate into creating a desired biological effect or an undesired biological effect. Okay. So that's kind of what I want to like continue to think about as we move forward through this. All right. So in the world of diabetes, you basically have like multiple different types of diabetes. You got the, the autoimmune diabetes on the top left, type 1 and 1.5. Then you have pre-diabetes and type 2, which is the, the focus of this presentation. And those are considered lifestyle diabetes. And then on the bottom, you have uh, types of diabetes or blood glucose irregularity that affects females. So gestational diabetes is, is temporary diabetes while pregnant. And then polycystic ovarian syndrome is not a type of diabetes, but it's basically a, uh, it's a condition that results in erratic blood glucose control. Okay. So all of them are connected by this thing called insulin resistance because insulin resistance is the central, um, the central factor that, uh, influences autoimmune and lifestyle and, uh, uh, diabetes of females. Okay. So here's the question. What causes it? So in the chat box, there are a whole bunch of other really good, let's see, here we go. <clears throat> okay. So a lot of you guys had answered that it's all about, it's either fat or it's fat and sugar, uh, some combination of thereof. And the answer is, uh, you take a photo of the screen if you can, okay? Insulin resistance is caused by the accumulation of excess saturated fat, excuse me, saturated fat in tissues that are not designed to store large quantities of fat, okay? So it's not just about all fat. It's not just about, you know, it's not to say that we can't eat fat. It's about the fact that it's the accumulation of an excess quantity of particularly saturated fat and the storage of that saturated fat in tissues that are not designed to store large quantities of fat, AKA your liver and your muscle. Okay. That is literally what the game is about. Okay. So when I first went to graduate school and I was given the task of trying to induce insulin resistance in animals and then reverse insulin resistance, um, using either intermittent fasting or diet or exercise, I had to figure out how do I create insulin resistance in animals? How do I create it inside of mice? And how do I create it inside of rats? And so I started reading everything that was available at the time. And my first thought was, well, it's all about sugar, right? It's all about sugar, sugar, sugar. It's all about carbohydrates. So let me just feed them a high glucose diet or a high sucrose diet or a high fructose diet, because that should probably do the trick. But no, 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 no. When you dig in the research, you actually find that it's all about lipid metabolism. Lipid basically just is a code word for fat, okay? Lipid metabolism and the pathogenesis of insulin resistance, okay? And the deeper I dug, it says how free fatty acids inhibit glucose utilization, how free fatty acids basically block glucose uptake in human skeletal muscle, the role of fatty acids in the pathogenesis of insulin resistance, the mechanism of free fatty acid induced insulin resistance in humans. This knowledge has been around for a hundred years, literally since the 1920s. It's all over the place. So anybody that can, you can just literally go to PubMed right now if you wanted to, and you could type in what causes insulin resistance and you will see exactly what I'm seeing right here. It's very, it's very straightforward, right? But yet somehow the public has been sort of, you know, the, the truth has been sort of like confused and people now think it's all about carbs, 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 okay? So like I mentioned earlier, insulin resistance is, is a function or is a, uh, a condition that affects your liver and your muscle. Those are the two target organs, all right? But in addition to that, it also affects your pancreas and it can also affect your brain, okay? But for the purposes of this presentation, we're gonna talk about the, ter the two livers, the two tissues on your left, your muscle and your liver, okay? Now, the last thing I'll say here about insulin resistance before we get into the mechanism is that insulin resistance, again, it affects all forms of diabetes, as you can see in the top right quadrant in, in orange, whether it's autoimmune, whether it's prediabetes and type two, whether it's gestational, all of those forms of diabetes are affected by insulin resistance. But in addition to that, your cardiovascular metabolism on the bottom right, which is your dark blue, is also negatively impacted by insulin resistance. In other words, the more insulin resistant you become, the higher your risk for coronary artery disease, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, the hardening of blood vessels, high cholesterol, Okay. There's many forms of cancer that are actually directly linked with an increasing degree of insulin resistance. And then there's conditions like obesity, fatty liver disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and Alzheimer's disease that are all negatively impacted by increasing insulin resistance. And then there's all this stuff on the top left in red, which is neuropathy, blindness, kidney failure, retinopathy, erectile dysfunction. 
These are all different conditions that people with diabetes are basically just told, they're like, sorry, it's going to happen to you. It's just, it's just, it's just part of the disease process. So expect it at some point in the future. Right. And this is why a lot of people with diabetes end up, you know, going down the path of like nerve damage. They have to get limbs amputated. Sometimes they go, their eyesight gets terrible. They have to, they go blind. Sometimes they get kidney failure, which can lead to a kidney transplant or dialysis. I mean, it can be a pretty uh, treacherous route, but all of it is connected to insulin resistance. So you as the individual have the power, as long as you know that insulin resistance is literally the single most important health condition that you can positively impact every single moment of every single day, you then have the, the instruction manual for being able to reverse the insulin resistance pathology. And when you do that, then your severity of all of these chronic conditions go down simultaneously. Okay. That's why it is such an important mechanism. And that's why it is something that we all should become more knowledgeable about because it's not about treating the symptoms of insulin resistance, which are all of the things on the outside. It's about treating the root cause of insulin resistance, which is in the middle. And when you do that, then all of a sudden the outside becomes much more manageable. Okay. So here's a sequence of events. Step one, lipids enter your blood. Okay. Here's what happens. You eat a cheeseburger. The cheeseburger contains a bun plus red meat, plus cheese, plus maybe some lettuce, pickles, onions. Okay. All of that in the middle. Now, this is a saturated fat and refined carbohydrate bomb. In other words, uh, when you eat a hamburger, there's a significant amount of total fat that comes from both the red meat and the cheese together. But in particular, the type of meat, the type of fat that you're getting is uh, saturated fat. Okay. Now this, all of these fatty acid molecules, including the saturated fat, they're depicted in the little yellow circles. So those yellow circles, basically uh, the, the saturated fat, and the rest of the fat basically become available for digestion inside of your small intestine. And inside of your small intestine, you have these billions, maybe even trillions of these little finger-like structures. They're called villi or microvilli. And what happens is that all of the nutrients inside of your small intestine kind of brush up against this, this, this border. And as soon as they get <clears throat> access to that border, <clears throat> these lymph structures, can detect nutrients and they selectively pull nutrients out of the inside of your small intestine and they pull it into the blood or into your lip system. So these lipids get pulled out of the inside of your small intestine and they get put into your lymph. And as soon as they get inside of your lymph system, they travel for some period of time before they get transferred to your blood. And then as soon as they get put into your blood, they are then packaged into these particles called chylomicron particles. So those chylomicron particles are basically put into your blood. So within, you know, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours after eating uh, a fat rich meal, the amount of chylomicrons inside of your blood increases. Okay. Now at the same time, inside of your stomach, something else is happening. Okay. The lipids are going to actually slow down your, what's called your gastric emptying rate, which means that because there is uh, fat inside of your food, your stomach senses this and nerves inside of your, uh, small intestine experience, uh, um, excuse me, there are hormones that are secreted from your small intestine, then communicate to nerves that control how easily your stomach opens. And effectively what that means is that when you're consuming uh, a fat rich meal, it basically slows down the rate at which your stomach empties. So it almost causes like a little bit of a traffic jam inside of your stomach and there's less food per unit time that's being dropped into your small intestine. And the reason that that's important is because the fat is the one that starts to get absorbed quickly, but then by absorbing fat quickly, it basically slows down the rate at which carbohydrate is absorbed. So fat effectively wins that battle, okay? So if we zoom in a little bit more, in, inside of your blood now, you got thousands of different metabolites and thousands of different circulating hormones and immune cells and beyond. I've only pictured three of them on the screen here. You got insulin, fatty acids, and glucose. Insulin in green, fatty acids in yellow, and glucose in blue. So when you eat a fat-rich meal, the amount of fat in those chylomicron particles increases. So that's why I drew a significant amount of fatty acids right here in the center. So the fatty acid concentration increases. Glucose concentration is, is low because the only source of glucose from that meal was the bun, and there was a decent amount of it, but 
glucose hasn't really gotten into your blood yet because your gastric emptying rate has been slowed down. So the fat enters your blood first. And there's a little bit of insulin in circulation because there pretty much always is, which is depicted in green. So the fatty acids basically have to go somewhere because they're just using your blood as a, as a highway or a conduit to get to somewhere else. So your liver and muscle uh, are two places where fatty acids can accumulate or where fatty acids can be taken up. So the fatty acids end up getting absorbed, truth be told, by three tissues. The first one is your adipose tissue, your fat tissue. Okay. But then the spillover, everything that doesn't get into your fat tissue ends up going inside of your liver and inside of your muscle. So within a few hours after eating a fat rich meal, you end up with lipid that has entered your adipose tissue plus your liver plus your muscle. Okay. Now that's okay in small quantities, but when there's a significant amount of saturated fat, then all of a sudden we have a little bit of a problem because glucose is also trying to get inside of your liver and muscle because that's where glucose wants to enter as well, or that's where glucose wants to go. But glucose can't get inside of your liver and muscle unless it's accompanied by insulin. Okay. Insulin is an escort that's required in order to get your liver and muscle to take glucose up. So insulin goes and knocks on the door. So say, knock, knock, there's glucose in the blood. Would you like to take it up right now? And your liver and muscle under normal circumstances would say, sure. sounds like a plan. Like, give me some glucose. But because there's already a significant amount of fat that's accumulated inside of your liver and muscle, the liver and muscle basically say, no, 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 no. I'm not paying attention to you right now because I got to deal with this stuff first. Like there's a bunch of fatty acids that just entered literally like half an hour ago. Uh, I didn't ask for them. I got to, I got to figure out what to do with this stuff first. I got to oxidize this first. Therefore I'm going to, I'm going to resist insulin. I'm going to reject insulin. I'm going to repel insulin, whatever word you want to use. Okay. This is insulin resistance. The liver and muscle literally create a self-defense mechanism to block their receptivity to insulin. They create a self-defense mechanism to block insulin from communicating with those two tissues because they're trying to find a way to block more stuff, more fuel, more energy from getting inside both of those tissues. So when insulin knocks on the door, says, hey, knock, knock, I got glucose inside the blood. Would you like some? Both of those tissues say, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm resisting you right now. I'm playing insulin resistance because I got to burn these fatty acids first. So glucose then gets trapped and glucose is sitting in the blood being like, well, I'm supposed to go in the liver. I'm supposed to go in the muscle, but there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go because insulin can't get me in there. Insulin's trying and insulin's not being effective. Therefore, glucose ends up pooling or increasing in its concentration. So you as the end user, maybe two hours later, three hours later, the next morning for breakfast, you're like, you know what? I'm going to eat a banana. So you eat a banana. And the banana contains a small amount of carbohydrate called 25 grams, 30 grams of carbohydrate. So you eat some, you eat a banana. It's got carbohydrate energy. It gets cut into glucose molecules. And those glucose molecules then enter your blood. Again, glucose is trying to get inside of your liver and muscle. Insulin goes, knock, knock. There's a banana. There's glucose from a banana inside of the blood. Why don't you take it up right now? And liver and muscle are saying, nope, sorry. I'm still resisting you. I'm still resisting you because you put a lot of stuff into me earlier and I didn't ask for it. You put a lot of fatty acids inside of me earlier and I had no choice but to take it up. So let me first deal with that stuff and then I can take that glucose up. So glucose effectively ends up pooling inside of your blood and your glucose value goes up. 